After seven days of redistricting talk, it looks like we could soon know what the state's congressional lines will look like. Two mirroring maps from the House and Senate are headed to the governor's desk right now. THV 11's Mercedes McKay is live at the state capitol with a look at that new map and more on the opposition to it. Mercedes. Michael, the identical maps were both voted on by the House and Senate this morning. Now it's all up to the governor. Now this is the map that splits Pulaski County into three U.S. House districts. It breaks up portion of the state's most populous county among the first, second and fourth congressional districts. Since both of these maps were presented on the floor, there has been a lot of heated debate about what this could do for our state. Those against the map say other maps proposed in this session were much better than the one going through. I think the people of Little Rock and Pulaski County awakened a little late in the game because once they get rolling, they can write a lot of texts and emails. It's too late now. We're going to have to go to court and we're going to have to declare there were ma numerous maps that kept every county whole, every county. This morning, the Senate voted to refuse to end the session because they worry the governor will veto bills. This means they'll be meeting every day until they get on the same page. The House will meet tomorrow morning at 9. Now, both senators I spoke to on two different sets of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats, described this session as the most challenging one yet. This afternoon, the Public Health Committee will be meeting to discuss a bill that was passed in the Senate this morning regarding the privacy towards COVID-19 vaccines. As always, stick with us on THV11.com. We'll have much more tonight at 5 and 6. Michael. Mercedes McKay live at the state capitol. Thank you. Pfizer and BioNTech have officially submitted their request to the FDA to authorize emergency use of their COVID-19 vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11. The latest data from the American Academy of Pediatrics shows that kids make up more than a quarter of new COVID cases nationwide. Meanwhile, in Florida, where the governor has blocked mask mandates, the Department of Education is meeting to consider possible punishment for districts that enforce them. Omar Villafranca spoke with a family that says the law is putting people's lives at risk. Every night I wish upon a starfish that I can go back in person. Nine-year-old Reefy Kinder has been learning virtually for almost two years. I miss socializing with my friends. Just being nine years old and hanging out with your buddies. Yes. Reefy had 30 surgeries over six years, leaving her immunocompromised. Her parents and doctor decided not to send her to school in person this year because there's no mask mandate in their county. It was too dangerous, if you ask me, for the other kids to go in without masks, let alone a child who's immune compromised. The Kinders and 10 other families are part of a federal lawsuit against Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, the State Department of Education, and several school districts. It alleges an executive order from DeSantis banning mask mandates violates the Americans with Disabilities Act. School should be safe for all of the population, not just the people that believe in the governor at the time. A new state rule also lets families decide whether or not to send their child to school after being exposed to COVID-19. Anyone that may have been in contact uh, without symptoms uh, you know, should be able to stay in school. They can be monitored. The parents can be notified that there may have been a case. The parents, you know, have a right to have their healthy kids in school. Immunocompromised is immunocompromised. Pediatrician Candace Jones says kids like Reefy need multiple layers of protection against COVID. We need to do everything, hand hygiene, mask, social distancing, ventilation, all of those things. For Reefy, that means staying home until there's a mask mandate or she can get a vaccine. We want a decision or a vaccine because she wants to go to school. We reached out to Reefy School District for comment, but did not hear back. Now the kinders are extra careful because Reefy's older sister did get COVID and had a quarantine in another house. She's only 11 years old and not eligible for the vaccine yet. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Orlando, Florida. The FDA scheduled an advisory committee meeting last week to discuss the vaccine in kids ages 5 to 11. That meeting set for October 26th in anticipation Pfizer was going to submit their application. The latest development comes as we continue to see drops in our cases and hospitalizations here in Arkansas. 882 new infections were reported on Wednesday. While that's the highest jump that we've seen so far this week, it's actually down compared to this time last week. 
Meanwhile, lower days like yesterday are having a positive impact on our active case count. Right now, fewer than 8,000 Arkansans are dealing with COVID-19. Of those cases, 624 are fighting the virus from a hospital and six more deaths have been added to the state's total. Things seem to be moving in the right direction, but health officials are still urging people to stay consistent through the upcoming holiday season. The CDC is once again encouraging folks to stay separated for the holidays and rely more on virtual celebrations. And the state's Department of Health is echoing that message. We still have thousands of people in the state who have COVID-19. So I am concerned about the holidays because if people back off of the measures they are currently taking to reduce the spread of COVID-19, we could see a surge. The Arkansas Department of Health recommends not gathering in large crowds regardless if it is indoors or outdoors. They also encourage getting the flu shot. And just a reminder, you can safely get the flu vaccine at the same time as the COVID vaccine or even your booster. You're just recommended to get them in separate arms. Senate Republicans and Democrats have struck a compromise to raise the debt limit at least for now. Negotiations began after Minority Leader Mitch McConnell released a statement yesterday saying that his party would temporarily give up its objections, allowing Democrats to raise the ceiling into December. But the extension means we could be right back here in two months unless Democrats find a way to extend the debt limit further on their own. Forget raising the debt ceiling. Some on social media argue that executive branch, the executive branch, can avoid the crisis through a $1 trillion coin. Evan Kosloff verifies. The debt ceiling. It can be a bit confusing. That's why we verify. On social media, tweets like this suggest that the Treasury could simply mint a trillion dollar coin to cover our costs rather than increasing our debt limit. Even lawmakers like Rashida Tlaib took to Twitter, writing hashtag mint the coin. So let's verify. Can the Treasury simply mint a platinum coin worth one trillion dollars? Here are sources, a trio of economic and policy experts, and Michael N. Castle, a former governor and House representative from Delaware. We also look through Title 31 of the U.S. Code, where you'll find this important line, which says that the secretary can mint and issue platinum coins of any specification, designs, varieties, quantities, denominations, and inscriptions, and that it's, quote, in the secretary's discretion. So we tracked down the man behind that section of code, Michael Castle. Original intent of this uh, was for coin collectors. He explains that he proposed that language back in the 90s as a way to sell coins to collectors and make the government a little bit of money. This was just for small denominations. Uh, smaller denominations than the uh, some of the money that's being talked about now. So we could verify that technically, yes, the Treasury could simply mint a platinum coin worth a trillion dollars or more, but it's never been tried before. So to get some context, we took the idea to our three experts. It is a workaround, a workaround the debt limit that would lead, make a bad situation even worse. Now, to be clear, that's crazy. I mean, this is this is not the sort of thing, you know, the government should be doing. You know, we want to have serious books and everything. But the reason why I put it forward and others have put it forward is the debt ceiling's crazy. I think it would make us look like a banana republic. This is something that Congress could fix with a, with a vote. Also not on board, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, who called this a gimmick that she does not support. With your Verify, I'm Evan Kozlov.